ages of all pairs. Welcome to Ludus Volpez. My name's Kirsty. And I'm Phil. And you join us as we run through Maps of Mysteria from Sit Down Games. Mysteria. Oh, I always say it wrong. It's okay. <laughs> it's okay. It's it one feels of those. like it's mysterious. But it's Miss Terror. Terror. All right. Maps of Miss Terror. Terror. No, Ter no different no, kind of terror. Different. Terror meaning terror. Earth. Um, have you ever wanted to be a cartographer on a lonely island that has just been discovered? Because if you have, this is the game for you. Maps of Miss Terror. Ooh. Some really beautiful artwork from Sit Down Games. Mm hmm. Um, four to one to four players. There is a solo mode, um, and the game takes about mm, for two players about half an hour to forty-five minutes. Yeah. Um, the box is forty-five minutes, but actually, I feel like that's a little bit long I for think, a two-player game. I think game. that's probably right for maybe four players once yeah. everybody knows the game. Yeah, that's probably true. So, if you want to know more about Maps of Miss Terror, join us at the table, and we'll take you through how to play and a sample round. See you there. So you can see we've put the uh, board out. We've got these tiles, which are double-sided tiles. You want them with the fog side placing upwards. Now, um, for setup in a two-player game, we need to begin by putting three forest tiles in the three locations marked with trees. And player count. And based on player count. You'll note that we've also added these small uh, ter terrain guidance cards. And these, uh, we've currently taken out the three and four player uh, ones. So we've only got the two player cards. Would you like to explain how those work, Phil? Thanks. Okay. Kirsty's <laughs> <laughs> <I, laughs> very formal when she's doing introductions. Um, so, Maps of Miss Terror is a game of mapping this island. And you've got two things you're going to map. You're going to map this island and you're going to map your own personal map just here. And we're going to our own personal maps. And we're going to send our little cartographer dude. Yours is a dude and mine's a dude. All the way around the island. Da, da, da. La, la, la. Like that. And they are going to map the island for us. Now, mapping the island is going to take place on two levels. First and foremost, you're going to use these little terrain sketches to map the island on your player board. And what's going to happen here is going to reflect here most of the time. So each of your guys can move one space at the start of their turn. There are ways of moving faster. You can't go diagonally. So, and at the start of the game, you're going to get to pick one of these beach spaces to start from. We've so, just arrived. Yeah, on the on beach. On the beach. I think you just, you know, you pour yourself a cocktail and you stay there. But these guys want to map, so fine, whatever. <laughs> um, what you're going to be doing is you're going to take one of these cards. And during the course of your turn, you're going to take two of them. They're described as two half days. And you play both half days before the next player has their turn. You get to play these onto your player board. And you can play them in one of two locations. Um, so, one of five locations, I guess. Now, wherever this guy can see on this board is where you can play one, uh, the, one side of these, one of these squares. So, I can see here, I can see where I'm on, and I can see over to the right, which means on my player board, I can place in one of those three locations. So I can start my terrain in one of those three locations. So, I could play it there, I could play it there, I could play it there, I can play it there, or I can play it there or there. I have options. But... Wherever my guy can see, that's where I can start the card. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to play that. And when I play that, I then reflect that action on the board, like so. But these are not fully discovered lands yet. These are partially discovered lands, which is why they're covered in fog. If I want to discover those lands, or Kirsty wanted to discover those lands, she would need to once again play a land type that matches the hazy tile. So if I were to then play this, and I move my guy here, and I play this here, I've covered water with water, and there's water there, so that water would flip over into its discovered side. And once it's on its discovered side, it's locked in place, like these three forests that we start with. Now I've also played a mountain area, just here, which is just north of where I've solidified that water. Now that doesn't, because this is locked in place now, it's non-hazy, it does not change the mountain range. It don't, you don't play a mountain range on the board. Now, if we'd have done something slightly different, 
So I'll just flip that back over. And let's say I'd have played it, instead of playing it this way on my board, I'd have played it this way on my board. Now I would still, because I played water on that space, I check water, water, so I flip this one. Here I've got mountain. Mountain, I've got hazy water. So what I can do is I will take that piece out, I'll place it back in the stack, and I will now bring some hazy mountain over, like so. Now, that, that technically would be the end of your go. That would be the end of my go. And then Kirsty would take her turn because I played two cards. At that point, this gets refilled. Yes. Now, I'm going to put those back and just explain a little bit more about um, some of the additional complications in the game and how points are scored. The, your little player reference card tells you how points are scored. For every square on this map that matches a square on this map at the end of the game, you're going to score two points. For every empty space on this map, you're going to lose a point. If you don't match, it doesn't matter, but you don't get the point points. You've also got four objective cards of which you'll be choosing two. They're worth points at the end of the game and those points are detailed on the cards. There is one other thing you can do. You can use your handy dandy claim markers. So instead of moving or playing a tile, you can discard a tile to claim an area of land that is solidified, not hazy. So if I was here, I could claim this ocean, this, this lagoon as my own. And that would allow me to score any one point for every lagoon tile that connects to that area. And players aren't allowed to share areas, although no. sometimes you can grow an area so that it connects to players and that discard, well, at the end of the game, will discard those claim tokens. So yeah. if one player is getting huge amounts of points from that and you can, from water maybe, all the way around here, and you can claim water here and then grow it into there, you can cancel out that player's score, which is interesting. So that's how the claims are going to work. You'll see those in action as we play the game. Um, there is one other thing. Each tile type has a power. Um, yes. They're detailed here, just underneath. So let's start with mountains because they're fairly easy. And this happens whether it's hazy or not. Mountains, instead of just having the adjacent tiles visible, um, spaces two spaces away are visible. So you can actually grow the Map board. further away. Yeah. Woodland, like this stuff, doesn't allow you to map at all. So you can't map from woodland. And I'm there in the wrong place. That's my fault. Um, <laughs> so yeah, woodland, which is this one here, doesn't allow you to map. If you're in a lagoon and you start your turn in the lagoon, you can get rid of one of these cards, putting it to the bottom of the deck and turning it one face open. You've gone fishing. Yeah, basically. <laughs> and then finally, you've got the steps, which are these guys. Um, and they allow you to whiz through because they're big open prairie big land. Big open prairie land, which allows an additional movement for each prairie land you stand on. So you can move faster across the board with prairie land. Um, and they're the four powers. And that is how the game is going to work. So we'll show you how the game starts. And on our very first turn, both of us have the opportunity to place our explorer on one of the beach zones uh, before we then go in and explore the map. Um, our explorers can share spaces on the board as well. So, yeah. uh, shall I play first? Yes, that's fine, yeah. Okay, so I'm going to start off here. So Kirsty now gets to pick where uh, she starts. I'm going to start here in section D. So that is the end of our first turn. No, it's not. Oh, we yeah, need we to got select that. our objective cards. So yeah. we've placed our um, meeples. And now I'm going to have a look through. Now... I am going to go for those two. I'm going to discard those. Close your eyes, Phil. And eyes I'm going to keep these two. Okay, okay so okay. over to you then, first go. Okay, so on my first go, I'm going to take this water tile, I'm going to move my guy to there, or my gal to there. I'm going to place here, which allows me to put a couple of hazy waters here and here so that's the end of my first half a day um i am going to then have take, a lunch break yeah have a lunch break <laughs> i'm going to move to there because i want to get further in but i actually still want to map that area i'm going to lock that in place now so i'm playing that over the top of what's already there and these are solid water nice little uh, lake that you've made there yeah i thought so too mm. so um, at the start, at the end of my go, I refresh those two that are missing, and mm -hmm. now it becomes Kirsty's go. Okay, so 
I am going to place this on my map here. Are you moving? No. Okay. I'm going to stay exactly where I am because I'd like to place it exactly in front of where I am. So that's two mountains. So I get two foggy mountains and I place these in front of me because my telescope tells me there are mountains blocking my view. Although she could be on this one and still play the mountains if she wanted yeah, to. Yeah, but I, I wanted to do that. Right? Okay. Then I'm going to move one step forward and then I'm going to place a mountain and a forest. Now, the forest is already here, but this now confirms this as a mountain. End of my turn. Top back up for Phil. Over to you. Okay, so I'm going to take this one. I'm going to step to here. And I'm going to put this here on my player board. I feel like someone's trying to collect a lot of water here right now. <laughs> so I have removed that mountain that Kirsty placed. How mean. How lovely. And I am now going to, on my next go, I'm going to take a step to here. I'm going to pick this one. And we're going to play that like that. So that locks in this as water. Mm-hmm. And I now get to add some greenery just here. Okay. And now we top up and it becomes Kirsty's go. Now Kirsty is starting in a lagoon, so if she wanted to, she could discard one of these five cards to replace it before she starts her turn. Uh, I am going to stay exactly where I am. I'm going to place a water and woodland here. Oh, interesting. No, there. Because you can put them upside down, you put them anywhere which you then like. solidifies that as woodland. Then my next turn, I will place... So in front of me, I'm going to place woodland and water. So for ease, I'm going to move that water across and place a new woodland just here. So that's put me in a slightly tricky position because I'm now in woodland, so I can't map on at the start on my turn unless I move. So I will have to be moving, and that just makes a level of sense. So I am going to move to here. Mm -hmm. And I am going to... I'm going to replace... This one here, so I'm going to put this mm -hmm. there on my board. Okay. Which is going to move that forest out of the way, put that there, and we're going to put some step just there. Okay. okay. That's stage one, that woodland goes there. And on my next turn, I'm going to step into this lagoon. You join us now. So you join us now as the board is almost full. Well, it is full. But these three spaces are unresolved. That will trigger the end of the game. We've also As got well, our completing player board our game. player boards. These cards are probably not going to run out. Um, mm, I don't know, actually. There's not maybe. that many left. These cards, which are our objective cards, score for our player board. So we're trying to match these onto our player boards. Um, so have you... Have I have you put, put them down, yes. It's okay, okay. You can open thank your you. Eyes so I'm just going to... It is my go, and I'm on a lagoon. So I'm going to start my lagoon. I'm trying to catch up a little bit. Um, with what's going on and this is a useful card for me because it can fill in this gap here but actually I can get rid of one of those because I'm in a lagoon and flip over a new card and see if that's more useful it unfortunately is not massively more useful so what I will do is I will take this card here and I'm going to go one two because I can go through the steps really quickly um, three because I can do that and I am going to play this one just here on mine. Those two spaces are locked in anyway, so that doesn't affect anything. And then for my next trick, I'm not in Lagoon, but I am two spaces. Um, I, can, I can put something two spaces away. Because he's at the top of the mountain here. Good viewpoints. I do have good viewpoints. Um, and it doesn't help me. Oh, it does kind of help me. So... Oh, it doesn't help me. It kind of helps. Um, I can, Make you mind it. <laughs> I'm not sure. Um, so I can play... What can A you song. play? I play the banjo. 
Sorry. You didn't know about that, Bill. did you? Uh, <laughs> I didn't either, to be fair. <laughs> Sorry. The music man just came into my head. I'm going to take this one and I'm going to play it here, which gives me an inaccuracy on my board compared to that board, but it also puts in an inaccuracy as well. So I'm happy with that. I'm going to cope. Kirsty, your go. Thank you. Now, I am currently at the top of a mountain. My eyesight is excellent. Um, Legendary, some might say. Yes. And so I am going to step one into a fast pace. Step another one into a fast pace. Hmm. Hmm. I don't want to get stuck in this situation. <laughs> I am going to place this one here. Which solidifies these two. Yes. So if Kirsty completes one more terrain piece, that will dictate the end of the game. Which I don't really want to do. I don't want to end up in woodland because then I can't map. Mm. <laughs> Which leaves me in a bit of a tricky situation. What I should have done is probably changed this woodland. Would have been the sensible thing to have done into something different. However, I did not do that thing. <laughs> and I can only move one, can't I? You can only move one. Unless I move into here, but that doesn't help me distance-wise doing anything else. I really need to get something here, so how am I going to do that? Can't bounce around, can I? <sighs> Trickery. Well, it might be worth just moving into that woodland so that at least next turn you can do something. Yes, but I can't map from the woodland. No, you can't. And you can't discard to claim because I've already claimed all this woodland. But it's the only way you're going to get to put something here. So I'll go here and forgo my go. You just still need to discard a card. Um... Discard this card. Now, as first player, if I end the game, Kirsty will still get another go. Do not end the game. <laughs> we'll be ending the game. <clears throat> okay, so what am I looking for? Have you finally found what you're looking for? No. Okay. No, I have not. I wasn't sure how musical you were feeling today. Not that musical. <laughs> so I'm going to go one, two, three, as mm -hmm. I can. And I am going to discard. Now, I can't claim another area of water, so I'm just going to discard that card at the end of that go. And then I'm going to go to here. I'm going to take this. I'm going to map that onto mine, which solidifies that, which gives Kirsty one more turn. Ooh. And that is the end of my mean. go. Mean. Mm -hmm. I've got minus two on my board at the moment. So. Okay. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to move to a mountain. That's fine. Then I am going to just look at my board and figure out what I need to do to make it match. And I believe the only thing of which I need to do is place this one here, mm -hmm. which now matches that. Yep. Now on my final go. You can claim this area of mountain for one yeah. point. It's one point, you might as well. Let's do it. So I'll do that and I'll discard the mountains okay. to own said mountains. So that is the end of the game. I'll whip in the score pad, the nifty <laughs> score pad, and we'll just quickly go through scoring. Would you like a pencil? I would love a pencil. And so the very first thing we do is we check to see what matches and we get two points for everything, which means Curse is going to get 30 points because she always does. But I won't. So 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16... 18, 20, 22, 24, 6, Six. 28, 30, 32, 34, 36, 38, 40, no. 42, 42, 44. 44 to my 50, I think. Yep. So if you get them all, which goes to the order. It's 10 per row. And then points. I get minus two for two gaps. I have zero gaps, which is zero minus points. And then we score our objectives. Now these are scored Ooh. based on here. So I've got this one, which is water tiles or water uh, uh, icons near the 
edge of my map, which is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight, that's 14 points for objective number one. Nice. What's your objective number one? My objective number one is um, having areas of twos which don't touch the same. So one, two, three, four, five. So five I areas think. of two. I think that's right, which mm -hmm. I think is actually only 10 points. No, six points. Six points. Unfortunately. Because wow, 12 points would be really hard to get on that. Uh, yeah, 12, 12 25 pairs. Points. But that would have given me 25 points, but it would have meant I wouldn't have had the initial 50 lead. So. so I now get, for every complete row across my board, just complete row, um, I get four points. So four, eight, 12 points. And my other one is set collection. Oh. So the number of each that I have, so the minimum I have is four. So it's going to be one, two, three, four, times four. So four. Four sets is eight points. Yes. Okay. so I've And the only reason why I didn't get higher than that is because I was trying to pattern match <laughs> using this. So um, I've clawed a few points back. Now we do claimed territory, which is mm -hmm. only me. So I've got... One, That's two. not true. I have a mountain, oh, thank so you, you very have a much. Mountain. It's two points per one. I'm just going to count them all and double them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Twenty-two points for me. You're supposed to Best separate is. them out into colour, but... Twenty-two points, and Kirsty gets two points. Yep. And then, um, so... We're playing with the cartogra tar cartographer which variant. Which is a final scoring benefit. Which is on this side, should be paying attention to. <laughs> which for every accurate row or column you get, you get three points. So I'll just put you down I'll to 30. I'll have 30, 30 points, please. <laughs> <laughs> and um, you get... Three? Yep. Six? Yep. Nope. Nope. Yep. Yep. So that's nine... And is, is that one no. right? No. Uh, hang on. No, because you put a blue there. That's it. Have you done this one? No. So nine, 12. twelve. So there you go. That's all the scores. Let's do some quick maths. So eighty points. Always starts cursey scoring with eighty because that's where it always that's starts. That's not true. Um, so eighty plus ten is ninety. Ninety-six. Now let's mm. see what I've got. Um, Forty-four plus fourteen is fifty-eight. Fifty-eight. Um, 60, 70, Have you added 80, that to 90, you I've not done anything with it, 90, 92, minus 2 is 90. You haven't added this 12 on. Plus 12 is 102. I think that's right anyway. Should we just check that now? Let's just check. So 12 plus 22 it's is 34. 34. 36, 46, 50, 60. 104 minus 2 is 102. 102. So 102 plays 96 in this exciting game of Maps of Mystera. Thank Kirstie, you. Kirsty, other than losing, what did you think? I don't mind losing a game. <laughs> I enjoy a game. So what I like about this game is the artwork. I like the tile laying, the set collection. It really appeases my OCD <laughs> in, in a way that means that I naturally play well at this game because I want to pattern match. Yeah. It just comes naturally to me. It doesn't bother me if, um, like it would bother me if it's not matching. So it naturally feels right to me. Um, I think these cards are often set to go against this big, the big scores of getting everything right and pattern, ma yeah. pattern matching and Agreed. the cartographer variant, which is making sure everything is exactly so. And I think these make it so that you either break away from that strategy or you go, forget it, it's not worth it. Or you're yeah. going to have to go really hard at it to make it worth it. If I had maxed out both of these, that would have been 25 plus 18 points. Mm -hmm. I don't even know if it would have been possible to do it. And it's still less than the 50 that I got. Yeah. So um, one of the things that I do find a little bit tricky with this, and if anyone's got any dexterity issues, would be if I'm trying to turn everything without knocking things. Yes. Yeah. It's just something just to be aware of. Yeah, the board's quite fiddly as you're building it, as, so, because you're, you're, you know, you're, you're turning a tile in the middle on the other side. And the tiles are chunky, which helps a lot. Yes. Um, 
But and, you will knock things, yeah. and you will be replacing, yeah. and shifting. And it just it doesn't destroy the game, it doesn't destroy the enjoyment of the game, it just adds a fiddly element, and yeah. at times you're like, ah, oh, I need to just, just nudge everything back together again. And it's the same with putting these um, cards onto your board, because they start to stack an overlay on your board, um, and so you can end up knocking them, and yeah. then like regaining neatness, it can be quite challenging when they're overlaid and overlaid and overlaid. I know when I'm playing Cursed at this game that I have to focus on claiming a couple of large areas because it's the only way I'll keep up because I won't pattern match in the same way that Cursed will. It's not part of my nature to do so. And I will also push for the end game and try and disrupt Kirsty's plans here, but it's actually... As you can see, that didn't, didn't work. work. <laughs> um, so <laughs> That was purely look at the draw with the cards, yeah, yeah. to be and honest. The, the last card was quite useful for yeah, you, it otherwise was. it would have lost you like nine points-ish. Yeah. So... Overall, the game plays really nicely. The powers as you play the tiles are quite useful and you, you want to take advantage of them as often as you can. Um, this area of woodland caused all kinds of headaches for Kirsty because I yeah. mapped this side of the board, she was over this side of the board, and you've got to get through the woodland before you can map over there or get on some mountain tops. I, I would definitely say that this game actually is quite thematic in that respect. The fact that um, when you're in an open space such as the Prairie Land, you can just make a run for it and you can easily see what's around. The fact that when you're at the top of a mountain, you have the ability to go further away because you've got that yeah. view. The fact that in your, if you're in a lagoon, you can go fishing, fishing and change. And the fact that you can't see through the woodlands so therefore you can't map until you've escaped that area it feels really thematic and i think that helps with the play of the game because you really have to consider what terrain you're stepping into on the next go yeah, agreed i think the, the the overall puzzle is really nice the shared board really love a shared mm -hmm. board where like players can butt heads against each other yep. that's really nice you kind of to play it well and over time you're going to always be looking at your opponent's maps it's all open information you're going to want to I know, but you are, <laughs> if you want to play competitively, you're going to want to do that because yeah. it's important to try and disrupt a little bit whilst maximising on your own. So yeah, overall, Maps of Mysteria provides a really interesting puzzle. Mm -hmm. It's not a multiplayer solitaire, which is something that no. I, I, bugs me quite a lot sometimes in games. This one has this interaction on the middle board. You can, yeah. you can really disrupt things on the middle board. You can push for an end of the game as well. You can. At two players, this kind of solidifies itself in a very natural way. Three and four players, you've got much more tile swapping in, tile swapping yeah. out before they solidify. So you you disrupt more at a higher player count on here, although the time for games will increase yes. proportionally. So overall, Maps of Mysteria presents itself as a, as a good two-player game and scales nicely to higher player counts where you're butting heads more frequently. I agree. I agree. And if that sounds like something you might enjoy, then Maps of Mysteria is certainly something that you should check out. Definitely. It's one from the Sit Down Games uh, publisher, which uh, they do excellent variety of different styles of games. So if you've not heard of those before, definitely worth having yeah. a look at their catalogue. Yeah, absolutely. There's some really good games in that, in that back catalogue as well. So hopefully you found this video useful. If you have, please like and subscribe. Don't forget, we're also on Facebook, Instagram and Twitter. Please just search for Ludus Volpez. Thanks, everyone. See you soon, everyone. Bye. Bye.